Victor Kai is an 11th grader from Parkland High School in Allentown, Pennsylvania, United States. He aspires to be a future researcher in electrical and computer engineering. He has been an enthusiastic participant in many science fairs with projects ranging from Arduino-controlled systems to SDR-based RF systems. He has won many awards in state and national level science fairs, as well as in math and physics Olympiad competitions at the middle school and high school level. However, today is the first time he will share his project in a professional forum. He is very excited about this amazing opportunity. Please welcome Victor Kai. Hello, I am Victor Kai. I'm a high schooler at Parkland High School in Allentown, PA. And my um, presentation here is on designing a narrowband radar using GNU radio and SDR for tomography and indoor sensing. The goal of this project was to design a low-power narrow-band radar using software-defined radio, or SDR, for tomography and indoor sensing. To achieve a 15-centimeter resolution, a traditional radar would require 1 gigahertz of bandwidth and a lot of power, which makes it a poor candidate for uh, amateur research. Meanwhile, a regular SDR unit can give 4 megahertz in bandwidth, which makes its theoretical resolution over 37 meters, which isn't very useful for short range applications. That's why you can find many SDR Doppler radars with uh, motion sensing capabilities, but no uh, SDR based distance sensing uh, radars. This project was able to create such a SDR distance sensing radar with 15 centimeter range resolution using only four kilohertz of bandwidth. And I did this by combining the low power SDR with the lesser known radar algorithm called multiple frequency continuous wave or MFCW, which uses phase differences in multiple frequencies to calculate the distance. Uh, here's my homemade system. It includes two SDR units with one per frequency, which use the antennas inside of these coffee cans uh, as transmitters to transmit toward the radar target. The target uh, reflects the signals back to the receiver antennas on top, which allows the SDR to measure the phase difference and thus calculate the distance. The target is mounted on a ruled uh, camera slider for comparison with the calculated distance, and I wrote the software with GNU Radio with graphics for demonstration. First, some background info. A traditional distance sensing pulse or MFCW radar requires a lot of bandwidth, and uh, this is not feasible for an SDR implementation. In fact, in order to get 15 centimeter resolution, it requires about 1 gigahertz of bandwidth. Uh, this is because they rely on an ultra wide bandwidth to create a very short pulse width uh, to increase the distance sensing accuracy. However, this uh, increases power consumption. Uh, as well as interferes with other wireless devices. My proposed narrowband solution uses MFCW, which stands for Multiple Frequency Continuous Wave, and this uses two continuous waves at two different frequencies simultaneously in order to calculate the distance using the phase differences. Uh, for example, as shown in this uh, diagram, we have a 2.5 gigahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz uh, signal, two different frequencies, and these give two different wavelengths. Uh, that means that once they uh, bounce off of the target, they will come back with different phase uh, differences. And um, in fact, the phase difference between these two frequencies will increase linearly. So we can use the phase differences to calculate the distance. My goal is to design an MFCW radar that uh, can be made with a low cost and low power 2 megahertz uh, bandwidth SDR unit and can still achieve the superior 15 centimeter uh, accuracy of the expensive traditional radars at which use the 1000 megahertz ultra wide bandwidth. And this proof of concept opens the doors to many short ranged radar applications with a low power and low cost SDR technology, uh, including autonomous vehicles, smart homes, medical sensing, imaging, and tomography. 
So my first MFCW radar design used the used a single SDR, and the idea is in order to uh, get onto multiple frequency channels for my MFCW, I would hop between the frequencies I needed with a single SDR. So um, this slide shows the mathematics behind that. Um, first, we take one of our, say, two signals. Uh, say we take the 2.5 gigahertz uh, carrier and we uh, modulate a two kilohertz signal on top of that to give us a transmitted uh, transmission signal. And then I can send that signal and it gets reflected back from the wall and re-received. Um, and that comes back with the phase information, which is shown in red. Uh, and we want to recover that information because that's what we can use to measure the actual distance. So in order to do that, we multiply by the conjugate of the 2.5 kHz carrier, uh, which recovers the 2 kHz signal with the phase information attached. Um, and then we can multiply by the conjugate of the original 2 kHz signal uh, to give us just um, the phase information that we need. Then we can do all this again with our second frequency at 2.4 gigahertz in order to give us two phases. And then we can subtract those to uh, calculate the distance using the phase differences. This is the design for uh, my single SDR system. Uh, we have two tin cans as antennas, uh, one's transmit and one's receive, and I connected both of them to a single SDR unit. And then we have the camera slider rail and the target. Um, and then the antennas are optimized for uh, the range in use around the 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz range. This is the actual code for my single SDR design in GNU radio. Um, it starts with a 2 kilohertz signal source, which is then modulated. Um, this mostly reflects the mathematics that I showed earlier. It's modulated and transmitted and then received over here in this block um, and then sent um, to calculate the phase by multiplying the conjugates. And then we can display the um, calculations um, through GNU radio as well. Additionally, at the top here, we have the uh, switch, which allows us to switch between our 2.4 and 2.5 uh, gigahertz carrier rates. Here are my results for uh, my first design. I was able to successfully recover the 2 kilohertz uh, signal even after being reflected. Uh, I also detected the correct phase across the distance that I um, tested it at. However, the major issue was that um, my frequency hopping idea did not work. And this is because my specific SDR, the Lime SDR Mini, um, whenever it switched frequencies, the starting phase uh, would be ra random or at least not predictable. So um, that messes up my calibration. So unfortunately, I couldn't uh, pursue this design further until I find a better SDR. But until then, I have to come up with a different solution. So this solution would come in my second design, which is a dual SDR design. I have two SDRs, uh, one on each of the two frequency channels. That way, neither SDR has to switch. Uh, and also, in order to minimize the increase in size, uh, instead of adding two more uh, CAN antennas, I added two compact Wi-Fi antennas, and then now the the CAN antennas are the transmitters, and the Wi-Fi antennas will be the receivers. Um, and then in order to separate the, uh, all the antennas from each other to try and avoid coupling, I 3D printed a mounting bridge uh, to keep the antennas uh, further away from each other. So here is the GNU radio code for my dual SDR design. Um, it includes a channel A and a channel B. 
uh, which are essentially just um, slightly edited from the previous uh, single SDR version and then duplicated. And then there's a portion which combines the two and then calculates the distance. And then this allows me to have the, when I run this, I get the GUI interface, which allows me to visualize the uh, two waveforms and their phases, as well as display the phase delta and the calculated distance. So the quickest way to test my design was to put the target at integer multiples of one of the wavelengths. Uh, that way, um, one of these sine waves would give a zero, while the other one would give an, another number, which can be used to uh, calculate the distance. Um, so I put the target at um, integer multiples of the wavelength, uh, or at least incremented it so that the round trip distance increases by a wavelength each time. And below we have the data, which is very good. Um, the actual data and the uh, calculated distance match up very well and are within five centimeters, or centimeters of the actual, which is uh, well within my uh, 15 centimeter expected. However, when testing for arbitrary distance uh, calculations, I found an interesting problem where um, every so often in a certain region, it would always give me a negative distance. And so I developed a simulation to try and figure out why this was occurring. And you see the simulation here, um, which includes some screenshots from an Excel sheet. Um, the first graph is a plot of the two uh, phases uh, for the different um, for the two different frequencies and um, basically I would subtract uh, one phase from the second one in order to calculate the distance however we see that in the regions where the orange graph uh, drops from pi to negative pi uh, the blue graph has a short period where it hasn't dropped yet and in that period, actually, when I subtract the orange one from the blue one's phase, uh, we get a negative number, which causes those negative uh, distance calculations. So the solution is to detect that and then add 2 pi to the phase whenever that happens. And um, that is my algorithm for uh, fixing the arbitrary distance calculations. So now here are my testing results for uh, arbitrary distance calculation again, but this time with my uh, algorithm to correct erroneous results. I was successful in, a in being able to correct the erroneous results, which are shown as the red dots in the top graph. Um, additionally, I successfully have a 15 centimeter accuracy within my 70 centimeter range. Um, which is matches the accuracy of those uh, traditional radars um, with much less power and much less bandwidth. Uh, however, my uh, distance calculations have a slight periodic oscillation where they should be nice and linear uh, with degrading accuracy as the distance increases. And I'm not entirely able to explain it yet, um, one possibility would be a nonlinearity in the signal phase. As you can see, the um, signal phases should be a nice sharp sawtooth. However, instead they show a little bit of a curve in the tooth part. Um, uh, this is likely a result of a nonlinear amplifier phase. And um, ideally, uh, we want them to be nice and linear so that we, uh, our data for the arbitrary target distance looks more like the data that we had for the integer multiples of the wavelength. So here is how I conduct my experiments. Uh, first, I set the target to the 30 centimeter mark. This is uh, used as a zeroing distance so that this distance is considered zero and everything is measured from there on. Uh, in order to set it as zero, I need to line up the phases for the transmit and receive in both 
uh, the 2.5 gig and 2.4 gig signals. And I do that with the phase shift here, which allows me to line them up. So now they are both zeroed out uh, and the distance shows zero. So now uh, in order to make a graph like on my board here uh, with arbitrary target distances, uh, I push back the target by one centimeter and then I record the distance that it uh, shows on the screen. And I do that uh, all the way backward, one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, and so on, in order to create a, a graph like that. And then for testing uh, its use for tomography, uh, I can set up a drywall, a piece of drywall in front of all four antennas here which blocks all four of them, but the radar is able to sense through the wall and see my hand uh, moving behind the wall. So tomography, specifically the ability to see through walls, uh, is very useful in various situations. For example, law enforcement officers can use it to avoid walking into an ambush, which minimizes casualties. Um, Additionally, emergency responders can use it to see through collapsed buildings to locate survivors. And it also has many medical uses for um, penetrating through the human body. Now, um, in order to test these, um, I set up uh, drywalls, uh, wood, water, and oil uh, in front of the all four antennas uh, in order to create a barrier. However, the Radar was still able to sense through the wall or other barrier, uh, which makes it a good candidate for both security and medical tomography. Um, additionally, there are uh, several types of uh, motion that it can detect. Um, for example, um, we see that if it's just background noise, then it shows a sim uh, single uh, distance measurement uh, for just a background. And then for a slow moving target, you can see the histogram uh, slowly moving uh, towards or away from the target. And then for a fast moving target, uh, there's a more unstable waveform and uh, a more fluctuating value. Uh, so it can detect all these types of motion um, with the help of the histogram, which is a good illustration of that motion. In conclusion, uh, my project was able to demonstrate a new approach in making the narrowband radar more accurate and low cost by combining the unpopular MFCW radar algorithm and the low cost SDR, which can lead to many short range radar applications. Uh, this MFCW SDR based distance sensing radar is made with a range resolution of 15 centimeters while only using a few kilohertz of bandwidth. Uh, a self-made uh, distance sensing algorithm was also created with the co capability to correct erroneous results from direct delta phase calculations. And for comparison, a traditional radar would have to use one gigahertz of bandwidth to achieve the same 15 centimeter resolution, which means I was able to achieve the same resolution with five, more than five times uh, magnitudes less bandwidth. As for future research, um, I will be focusing on two points, uh, trying to uh, get the starting phase to be more uh, stable when switching frequencies. That way I can use a single SDR design, which also cuts uh, even more cost, uh, and then improving the accuracy by uh, comp possibly compensating for any systematic error in nonlinearity or otherwise uh, making the uh, nonlinear phases more linear. Finally, I would like to thank the GRCon committee and reviewers for giving me this opportunity to pre present and publish. Uh, and thank you to the GNU Radio's uh, wonderful community spirit in providing free and intuitive tools to enable young enthusiasts like me to start research at the high school level. And to all the professionals at GRCon, 
If you have suggestions to help me with my amateur research project or need a volunteer like me for your research, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your attention.